Today's the day. It's time to learn how to remove the background or change the background on an image like this with a very busy background, lots of flyaway hairs, highlights in the hair, and just a lot going on. No AI involved. We're actually going to preserve all of her own original hair. First, I'll show you the standard way of making these selections. But since you don't always get the results you're looking for, I'm also going to show you another alternative that you don't see very often, but it actually works really well. Here's the image we'll be working with. I'm going to link both images, this one and the new background, in the description so you can download those and follow along and practice. As a bonus, I'll also teach you how to match the lighting and colors with the new background. I've placed timestamps in the description so if you already know which parts you want to watch, you'll be able to easily find those. Okay, let's get started. To open the new background I'm going to be placing her on, I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded, and choose my file. I'll just quickly resize to fit and drag that layer to the bottom. Okay, so here's the standard technique you normally see. I'm going to hide that layer, and with my original layer active, I'll click on this selection tool. Then we'll go to Select Subject, but in the drop-down menu, first choose Cloud. That'll give you a better selection. It missed part of her dress, so I'm just going to add that in. But another thing that it missed is all of these highlighted areas of her hair. And that's pretty typical. So the next thing you would do is just click on Select and Mask. And in here, we've got tools available to help us try and recover the hair that was missed. When the Selection tool on top is active, you'll get the Refine Hair button on the top of your screen. Always try that first because sometimes it works and you might just end up with a beautiful hair selection. In this particular case, it didn't work very well. It did give me a little bit more of her hair, but it's still not complete. The next thing I'll try is the second tool down, the Refine Edge tool. Just drag it along the edges of the hair and let go when you're done. Again, it didn't give me the results that I'm looking for. Another thing you can try is switching between object aware and color aware. Sometimes that works, but in my case, you can see it didn't do me any favors. So I'm just going to click cancel since none of that worked for this particular image. And I think this is a common frustration. You've tried everything, none of it worked, so you're left with no solution. We're going to fix that. So I've just hit Control D to deselect, and now I'm going to teach you a different technique that you can use when you have a very busy background and lots of flyaway hairs. The first thing you'll need to do is just get a very rough selection around your subject. It does not have to be exact. I'm just going to use the lasso tool to do that. And then Control J to put that on its own layer. I'm just going to hide the original for a second so you can see what we're working with. The next thing I want to do is try and create more distinction between my new green background and the original bluish gray background. Because we're just going to delete her original background. So it makes sense that the more different they are in color or brightness or whatever it is, the easier it'll be for Photoshop to be able to see the difference between the two. So in this case, what I'm going to do is create a hue saturation layer above the background layer, and I'm going to really saturate this layer. I'm going over the top. That way, there's no question what is the background and what is my subject in front of the background. We're going to be using the background eraser tool for this. I think the reason a lot of people maybe don't like to use it is because they might not truly understand how it works. So let's take a look at it. With the top layer active, I'm going to select the background eraser tool. If you don't see it, hold down the eraser tool and then choose background eraser from the pop-up menu. Now on the options bar, I'm going to choose contiguous. I also have my tolerance set at 12%. Now let's talk about how this works. Notice when I have the background eraser tool selected, the cursor looks a little different. It's got crosshairs in the center. That spot is called the hot spot. It's highlighted here in yellow and the hot spot deletes the color that's directly underneath it wherever that same color appears within the bounds of the brush. So for example here, if I hover the hot spot, that center spot over top of this bluish gray color and click, everything that is that same color within the bounds of the brush will disappear. Now remember, I have my tolerance set at 12%, so Photoshop is not going to deviate more than 12% from my original selection of those blue-gray tones. Also, remember when I selected contiguous in the options menu? The contiguous option erases areas that contain the sampled color 
and are connected to one another. So the pixels have to be touching in order to be erased. Now, if I choose discontiguous, it's just the opposite. It still erases the sampled color wherever it occurs under the brush, but the pixels don't have to be touching. So this is a great way to remove those little pieces of background that are showing through her hair in certain areas. Photoshop will skip over her hair and just remove those blue-gray tones of the background. A cool thing about this is it also performs color extraction at the edges of any foreground object. So it's actually taking the color out of her hair. So color halos are not visible if the foreground object is later pasted into another image. Now you might be thinking, that's great. These are all basically the same color. What do I do when there's a million different colors? All you have to do is the same thing for each color. Hover the hot spot over top of the color that you wanna remove, click, and depending on which settings you've chosen, it will remove that color within a certain tolerance level. So if you have your tolerance set higher, Photoshop will remove anything remotely close to the color that you've clicked on. If you have it set low like I do, Photoshop is going to be very picky about only removing those particular colors that you've clicked on. And it won't deviate from that too much. So like right here, I might try and set my tolerance a little higher so that I don't have to click quite as often. And I'll just drag along. But you can see it took off too much this time. So for this particular image, I feel like 12% is doing a pretty good job. I probably could go a tiny bit higher, but I'm just going to leave it. You can always make adjustments as you go. In just a second, I'm going to show you a trick to make this nice and neat and smooth and perfect. But first, I'm going to zoom in just to show you how well this is working. Because all of her tiny little hairs are a different color, just slightly from the background, all I have to do is lower my tolerance a little bit more. I'm at 9% now. And as I click, I don't know if you can see this, but it's leaving those little hairs because the hairs are ever so slightly lighter than the background. See that? I don't know if you're able to see on your screen, but those tiny little hairs are remaining. And we're still going to clean this up even more. Now, once you get further away from the hair, you don't even have to be all that careful. I can even just go all the way up to 100% here because I'm not really overlapping anything. In fact, you could even just use a black brush with a regular mask and brush it off if you wanted to. But for this video, I'm just going to stick with the background eraser tool as I just click and brush to get rid of the last little bit of background. Okay, everything is perfectly extracted from the original background. Now we can get rid of that hue saturation layer we created earlier and get this really cleaned up and looking nice. The original background that she was on was blurred, so I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm just going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and just create a simple blur on this. So for this image, I think about a 7.8 looks right. Now that I've done that, when I zoom in, it's really easy to tell that we've missed those rough edges. That's super quick and easy to fix. All I'm going to do is create a mask and just brush it off with a black brush. And now it's time to make the colors and lighting of the new background match better with those of the original image. To do this, I'm creating a hue saturation layer, but I'm not going to use this to change the colors. I'm using it to sample the colors of my original image. So I'm going to sample the colors of her dress in the highlights, shadows, and midtones. So with this icon selected, I'm just clicking around the dress in all of the different areas to see what color tones are coming out. And it looks like we have a lot of blues. There's a magenta. Looks like we've got some reds in the highlights. Okay, so I got all the information I needed. I'm going to delete that layer. And now on top of the green background, I'm going to create a color balance adjustment layer. When I was sampling the dress, there were blues in the shadows. So I'm going to come up here and select shadows and turn up the blues. There were reds and magentas in the midtones. So now I'll select midtones and adjust my sliders accordingly. There were also reds and magentas in the highlights. So now I'll select highlights and adjust for more reds and magentas in the highlights. Now, obviously, that's way too saturated, so I'm going to fix that with a hue saturation adjustment layer, and I'm just going to turn that saturation down until it matches better with my subject. That's it for the color. Now we just need to fix the lighting. The original image is clearly backlit, so we're just going to do the same on the new background. All I'm going to do is create a light source in the background that's the same color as the highlights in her hair. So with the color picker tool, I'm just going to select the highlights in her hair. 
Now I'll create a new layer under my subject layer. And I always call this the blob layer. The reason is because all I do is create a blob of light in the background. So I'm gonna select the brush and with the new foreground color as the highlight color in her hair, I'm just gonna click once and create that blob of light coming from the back. Now you do need to change the blending mode to make it look more natural. And I think that color dodge looks the best in this situation. Now I see that there's still a tiny bit of color cast in her hair. Don't worry, that's easy to fix. All I'm gonna do is create a new layer and paint white over those areas. It looks weird now, but just give it a second. First thing I need to do is create a clipping mask so this only affects her hair, and then change the blending mode to soft light. So here's a before and after of what we did. It's too strong, so I'm gonna turn the fill down until it looks right. Now, if you just wanted to place her on a transparent background, all you have to do is get rid of the new background, the blob of light we created, basically everything below her. And now I'm just gonna right click and apply this layer mask. Hold down my shift key, select both remaining layers, right click and choose merge layers. And that's it, she's on a transparent layer. Now you could place her onto any background. So there you go, we've extracted her hair. We've maintained all of the highlights and flyaways. I hope you didn't mind me adding a whole mixed bag of tricks towards the end in blending the subject with the background. Here's one final before and after. I hope this was helpful. I have a whole playlist dedicated to masking hair and removing backgrounds, so make sure you check that out too because this is just one technique of many.